Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to Recording Artists Explained. I'm Bridges, and in this video, we're going to talk about how you as an artist can get the most out of your producer. The producer's job is to marry your story and your personality to music. It is also the producer's job to bring your song, EP, album, whatever it, whatever it starts as, to finish. It's his job to bring your project to fruition. That being said, you are an artist, but so is he or she. We, we are sensitive. That's what I'm getting at. We might not want the limelight as you, the artist, do, but we, we are artists behind the boards. We are artists behind the computers. We are artists behind the scenes. So that being said, we are sensitive. Um, if we spent hours on a certain part of the track and you just don't like it, that might dash our confidence a bit. And, you know, the more time you spend doing this, the, you know, as a producer, you will develop thicker skin. But it's, it's sometimes it's kind of hard for, to, it's sometimes kind of hard not to take it personally when someone doesn't like what you've spent a bunch of time on. In saying that, that doesn't mean the artist will like everything that I do, and that's fine. I, I totally accept that. Um, if I'm working with someone and they don't like something, the more descriptive they can be about why they don't like it, the it just helps all of us because um, I'll know what choices to make in future songs so we don't even need to, I'll just know not to pick those kinds of sounds for you in the future, you know? But if I'm working with someone and they say, hey, can you just make this better? That is the worst. I mean, that hasn't happened in years. Like I, you know, I'm blessed that I'm not working with artists like that. But um, yeah, the more descriptive you can be, the closer a producer can can bring the song to what you're hearing in your head. Now, also, producers, we again, we're sensitive, so we love compliments. Um, I can't tell you how much better it feels to work with an artist when I know they trust me versus an artist when I'm, you know, maybe I'm still earning their trust. You know, I love when an artist will tell me, oh, I love what you did with my vocals there, or I love how you always make your drums slap so hard, or wh whatever the compliment is that they feel like giving, that will, that will embolden me to put more of myself into into their records. And um, you might not know this as an artist, but every producer, every producer has some weird technique or some weird sound bank he's been creating, or basically there's something that he thinks that is too weird to put on um, most artists. Everybody has it. And if you, if you embolden him or her, your producer, that that you love where they're coming from musically, maybe you'll be the artist that they put their, their, you know, mad scientist techniques on, and that could be that could be a, a brand new innovative sound. Because let's be honest, who wants a really safe production? You know, I, I mean, sometimes you're gonna want something that is a bit more obvious, so it can be more, more of a single. But you don't want to just come out with another Z record, do you? Basically, the more descriptive you can be about what you want, the better. Um, when I'm starting to work with an, an artist, I like to make Spotify playlists. Um, I like to understand where my artist is coming from, you know, and it can be multi-genres. You know, I, like, what do you listen to in high school? What are you listening to now? What do you think your project's gonna be like? All this stuff, and I love it because I can draw upon so many different sources. Like, it's very, it's very easy for me to say, oh, cool, you know, you like SZA, so I'll take some vocal production ideas from that, and like, oh wow, you put in Tame Impala, like, oh wow, those drums are cool, and then you put in Justice, cool slap bass samples. So just off the top of my head, I, you know, just made this up. So if we had the vocal production of SZA with the slap bass of Justice and the drums of Tame Impala, that's a brand new thing that no one has ever heard, ever. And I know that, because I just made that up. I might use that, but um, so Spotify playlists are awesome. And you know what? If 
every producer that sees this steals that idea. It's all, whatever. It's infinite. You can do this millions of times. So um, yeah, utilize that. I like to make Spotify playlists for every artist that I work with, and I encourage them to put in as off the cuff of references as they can, because it's very easy for us to draw upon different things uh, when piecing together their sound. Um, and also, I encourage them to get as specific as they possibly can with me. You know, if they're telling me that they like the bass on, you know, this weekend song, or they, and they like the vocal production on a scissor song, that tells me two things. They know exactly what they want, and they'll be able to hear when it's not what they want, which is great. I don't, I don't want to have guesswork. I want, I'm in the business of helping people. I want to, I want that sound in your head to be a real thing. A great producer will respect your artistry and the fact that you know exactly what you want and he'll be up for that challenge. I love mixing, I love mixing stuff together. So let's do it. As much as you can use descriptive vocabulary like, can we make the drums hit harder or can the vocals be wetter? Um, these kinds of very specific phrases are always preferred to can we make the vocal sound better or uh, I mean really that's just the worst one to get better is the worst one uh, so just never use that your producer will thank me for it or I will thank you for it lastly understand that making a record takes multiple stages don't expect your song to sound like Post Malone after one day a typical arc for a fully produced song could be something like this Day one, uh, track is 40 to 80% there, uh, lead vocal demo. So basically you'd have the track 40 to 80% there with a lead vocal over the top, maybe some harmonies, maybe some doubles. Um, you know, you might actually have the track, verse one, chorus, and then I could send you home with verse two open so you can write verse two and come back with that the next time that's that's pretty common that happens um then the next day would be finish lyrics and then do final vocals you know uh day three would be me taking the vocal session and now i'm comping editing tuning and getting your final vocal takes together um then I would take a day and import your final vocals back into the project and produce around that because I don't want to have I don't want to have the track 100% done and then add your vocals to it. That that would be calamity. I want there to be room. Uh, your vocals should be speaking more than the track. Number one, um, the worst comment to get as a producer or as a good producer is tracks crazy. I don't want the listener noticing the track crazy. crazy. The track will be crazy, but I want the, the compliment that I want and the compliment that you should want is I love this song. This song moves me because when some, when a song moves someone, it means that the, the lyric is crazy. The vocal performance is crazy and the track is crazy. That means that they're married. So I don't, I don't want someone to say, Oh, tracks crazy. So the way that I do that is I'll leave space and then put the final vocal and and then finish around that. Because most of the time when you have a final vocal on you know a pretty simple track, you don't need that much anyway. If you listen to what's on the radio um, or pretty much anything that's winning, it's not that complex. So um, keep that in mind. So, uh, and then after that, once I finish the final production around the vocal, then I would send you the demo and I'd say, hey, any notes on this? Any changes? If not, I'm gonna mix. And then if you have any notes, we'll do those notes. If not, it's time to mix. Um, you know, maybe the next day or so, a few hours, whatever, I will send you a mix. If you have any notes on that, I'll do those. If not, then it's off to mastering. So that's a typical arc for finishing one song. So to reiterate, you've got uh, day one, get track 40 to 80% there with vocal 
um, with at least leads done of the chorus and verse one, um, we can finish. It's very easy to put a bridge on and uh, and write a verse two. It's very easy to do. Once you have the template for verse one, doing verse two is very, it should go very fast. So day one, um, track 40 to 80% lead vocal. Day two, um, do day two, finish all the vocals, harmonies, doubles, all that stuff, vocal arrangement. Then day three and four would be on my own. Um, that would be comping, tuning, editing vocals, and producing around the finished vocals, and then mixing, then mastering. So yeah, it's a, what is that, a five-step process? After that, congratulations, you have a song that's fit for consumption.